Hello everybody, my name is Graham Elwood and you are watching The Political Vigilante. Um, the Green Party debate was today, uh, May 5th, and Howie Hawkins was not there. Uh, Dario, I forget his name, last name wasn't there, Jesse Ventura was not there. So we've talked on this show recently, there was a lot of buzz and talk of Jesse Ventura running because Jesse Ventura, this is retweeted this, this was on May 2nd, breaking, Jesse Ventura becomes a member of the Green Party uh, as co-chair Taryn Cruz looks on. Ventura 2020, V for Ventura, right? So this is in Minnesota. So they advertise this Green Party debate that he's going to be there, and as I've said, if he ran as a Green, that would be huge. So I, you know, Howie Hawkins has been on Jimmy Dore, he's been on Ron Placone, and uh, he sounds, you know, he's, 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 he's a Russia gator. I just can't get on board with that. So some of these other candidates that had this on the Green Party debate, and I applaud everybody who put the debate together, and I applaud all the candidates that got together. But this debate summarized the sort of problem that I've had with the Green Party. Is you need <laughs> a guy like this. Now one of the guys talking was like, we need to get, we need to flip the no voters. Four out of 10 people don't vote. And rather than shame them, he was saying, and I've said this too, I've, I've talked about this numerous times on this show because there was an article that was done on it three years ago. If didn't vote was a candidate, it would have run away, it would have crushed Trump and Hillary in 2016. It would have won an electoral landslide, it would have won a popular vote landslide. And what this one guy was saying was, Four out of 10 people don't vote. And he's, he thinks, and I agree with him, that most of those people aren't doing it because they're lazy or dumb or don't care. They're doing it because they think the system is corrupt and broken, which it is, and, and they're not represented. And it doesn't matter who they vote for. So it's really more of a protest. The not voting is a protest. And if you've got, if you coordinated to get those people together, that would be powerful. So telling these people, look, if you think the system is so broken, Vote for the Greens. And I think that's a fine strategy. The problem I've had with the Green Party, and I heard all this in bickering, this one guy, Chad, was talking about Howie Hawkins was corrupt and put in there, and this other woman said that neither one of them would vote for Howie Hawkins because it's the, the party's corrupt. And I just, you know, <laughs> I, I just was like, oh, great. So there's the kind of inner corruption. And this is the problem with the Green Party. I, as I said, I've had Jill Stein on the show. I like her a lot. I voted for her in 2016. And I, I, that, I feel better about that vote today than I did when I did. And I felt good about it four years ago. But I feel better about it today because we've learned just in the last 10 months even more about how awful the Clintons are, in particular with their ties to Jeffrey Epstein. Like that just keeps getting worse and worse. And so I'm so glad I voted for Jill Stein. And watching these vote any blue will do's say Joe Biden is the lesser of two rapists, you need to vote for him, it just shows you how insane the neoliberals have gotten. The Democratic Party is so corrupt. We've watched Bernie sell us out. So a lot of us who were like hanging our hopes on Bernie or Tulsi or the two of them running together or whatever, or the squad and everyone's gonna get together and yay. No, the progressives, the progressives within the Democratic Party have all buckled. They've all sold us out. They all just are gonna play ball. The stimulus plan shows it. The fact they're all lining up behind Joe Biden is a joke. It's a complete joke. So there's an opportunity for the Green Party to scoop up a lot of the real progressives, the Bernie supporters, the Tulsi supporters, to get the people that don't vote involved. And you're not gonna do it with a bunch of candidates no one's ever heard of debating these sort of ultra lefty fine points, after a while, I felt like I was just watching some, you know, live streaming of a school board meeting on, you know, cable access. I mean, I really, I was like, they're, 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 the, the Green Party, too often its problem is that it's just this sort of token gesture for people on the left who are done with the, the Democrats. Like, oh, I'm a green now. And there's not a lot of like legitimate, how do we win? 
it's just greens and talking about some some of it is good policy and I agreed with so much and they just want to go off in these sort of esoteric debates and discussions about all these things it's like how is that going to resonate with anybody outside of your little handful of lefty buddies at your farmer's market or whatever like how are you going to get those four in ten people that don't vote how are you going to talk to them it's the thing i said that bernie completely blew it that march 15th debate he blew it that was his chance to stand in the middle of history and go i'm the guy to lead us out of this crisis like fdr did the depression hit people were there was there was riots, there was strikes, there was t tens of millions of people unemployed, there was the Dust Bowl. Like it was, a per it was all of that. And then Hitler started stacking up his troops in the 30s in, in, the, in, in, in Europe and was like, well, that's, that problem's over there and that problem got closer and closer and closer while we were facing complete collapse here. And FDR rose to the occasion. Bernie could have done that and he did not. So the Green Party... seize the moment and I don't see that happening the only way they do that is if this guy decides to run and I don't know if he's going to or not if he does so many people would rally around and what the Green Party the and I've said this before so for Ron Placone and I have been doing the progressive comedy tour for two years and one of the things we did with that tour is we always said it's more than a comedy show and we'd reach out in every city to political groups, mainly the Green Party, the Democratic Socialists of America, the DSA, and Move for People's Party. And the one of those three groups that consistently flaked, didn't get back to us, didn't have much of a presence was the Greens. They showed up in some places, but Movement for People's Party and the DSA were, were almost in every city. I mean, they were so on it. And they had organization and they had, well, yep, we're in. A lot of times they reached out to us. Hey, we heard you're coming to our town. A, a DSA or moving from a people's person in another city said, hey, and contacted the person. And the Green Party, one time Ron said, he reached out to a Green in a city and said, hey, would you mind, you want to set up a table? And the guy said, oh, that's when I have yoga class. Literally, that's what a guy said. And that's been always my problem with the Green Party. I voted for them. I voted for them in local races and state government. Oh, you know, I voted for them numerous times just because I want to support a third party and their platform is what I'm down with. But, and you know, Jill Stein reached out to Bernie in 2016 and said, run as president of the Green. I'll be your VP. Bernie, of course, said, no, Bernie's a sheep herder. That's, that's, we don't need to get into that discussion. But, and Bernie and Jill Stein would have, that would have been a ticket so many people would have got down with. But they are not seizing the opportunity. And when, when I talk about the progressive comedy tour, that's just my personal interaction and seeing three different organizations, how they were run. And the Greens, which have been around a hell of a lot longer than the DSA and the Movement for a People's Party, didn't have their shit together because too often, and I see this in, in, in Greens, you know, it's just sort of like, oh, I'm a Green but we're not really gonna try to win. We don't really think we can win. We're not gonna try to really win. We're just gonna say these lofty things in speeches, but not really try to, and we're gonna you know, hand out flyers at a, at, a, at, you know, at a farmer's market in some super lefty part of town or state in Austin, Texas and Portland, Oregon and all those places, great. But they're not like going out. The thing that the DSA is doing is they're going into red states. They're going not just to the lefties, they're going into working class people and saying, we have a solution for you. Movement for People's Party is doing the same thing. But the problem is, is they, 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 the mountain to climb for them is, is huge. I get it. But they don't want to, and this one thing this, this guy Chad brought up, he goes, we're not utilizing our social media. So I had to dig around to find this, this debate. The Green Party USA Twitter feed, it wasn't all over. Their, their Facebook, it wasn't. And then it was like through a, like, 
the whole party didn't get behind this debate. This is the problem. It's just like a handful of hippies in this town and this town and they're not really like get involved. And again, I'm telling you, Movement for People's Party's got their shit together. The DSA, I know it's not a political party, but they are, a, they, they're, they're an organization that could really help sway an election. Right? The Sunrise Movement. They got their shit together. And this, I've been a green for 30 years. Well, okay, what have you won? Win something. Like when Kenneth Mejia made it out of the primary two years ago, which was a big thing, and there was another woman, I forget her name too, who was running in another district who made it out because California has a top two open primary system, right? And it was a big deal. The whole United States Green Party should have got behind those two people and said, let's do this. Get these people, we have a chance here. Spend all of our money and our resources. And if we just get one, if one of them wins, we just get Kenneth Mejia in Congress, holy shit is that big news. And we all would have done, I tried to, you know, we, he was on Jimmy Dore, well, I promoted, I, Jill Stein came on Jimmy's show. I love, I love Jill Stein, I love her. But then the rest of the leadership, uh, in all of the various regional green organizations, they're just, it's just a, it's just something for somebody to put a sticker on their, on their uh, Prius or whatever and drive to their farmer's market and just preach to the choir. Go out to the reddest of red districts and preach your message. Tell people right now who, who just didn't pay their rent for the second month in a row or had to put their rent or mortgage on a credit card or dip into their kid's college fund or dip into their retirement or dip into their savings. How many people have had to do that? How many of you watching have had to do that? You just did it on Friday. And you went, well, I know a lot of people are like, well, I'm not working, but thank God my savings is okay. For now, all those people, I don't know when I'm gonna work. I have a friend of mine who does live events. He produces live events for a living. He's like, I don't know when I'm ever gonna work. I got friends of mine scrambling to find new jobs. I lost all my road work because of this COVID. Thankfully, I've got this show and I've been busting my ass. I go live six nights a week in one form or another, either on Rockfin or YouTube or do the Zoom show with Ron. I'm, I'm busting my ass just to keep my lights on because I haven't got my $1,200 yet. I think I, I, I got turned down for unemployment the first time and I just applied last week for the second um, unemployment that's for, um, you know, uh, uh, W-2, 1099, you know, freelancers like me. Because that's what I am as a stand-up comic. I'm a freelancer. I don't work for one company. And I've gotten $1,000 in an SBA loan. <laughs> that's it. I've gotten 1000 bucks. So if I didn't have this show and I was just a road comic... I would be scrambling right. I don't know. I would have to, I would not be paying my rent. I would just have to go, sorry. <laughs> and then if we came out of this and I start going back on the road, I, I'm not getting a rent freeze. My rent's not getting cleared. I'm going to owe two, three, four months rent. So go talk to all these people that are scared right now in the middle of this pandemic and say, we're going to get you Medicare for all. This is what this party is going to do. No, we're not just a party for a bunch of hippies in California and Oregon and Austin, Texas and Asheville, North Carolina. We're actually here to help all of you working class people. No, sit the red state people down and go, no, don't be, don't be afraid of socialism. It's just like the banks. It's just like, um, well, what the banks get from the federal government, it's like, find the common ground. And I'm watching this thing debate and just like barely anybody's watching and I'm like, the, the party didn't get behind it. I mean, again, the organizers and the people involved did a fine job, but they're just... <laughs> Do you not see what's in front of you? This has never happened. I've said this. Jill Stein, um, Ralph Nader, 
even Ross Perot, none of them were running in the middle of a pandemic. Oh, by the way, that's also in a slowly um, expanding uh, <laughs> financial crisis that also happens to be in the middle of climate collapse. Like now was the time and I was watching this, I just felt like I was watching school board bickering, just nick nicky over little, little things. Sure, they're saying all this stuff. Yes, get rid of the private prisons, absolutely. Police reform, I'm all for it. But like talk about what is going on to most Americans right now and how the Green Party can come in and fix it. Explain how a Green New Deal would put everybody to work and it would make job, union jobs, making medical supplies and green products here in America right now. Talk to the working class American. Yeah. And they're like, the party's just drafting people and picking people. They're not letting a real primary happen. Okay, well, you guys are acting like you're a real party and you're not. You're not yet. I wish you were. I swear to God, I wish you were. I wish there was always a green on a national debate stage. I wish all of the greens were always getting interviewed. I wish half the fucking Congress was green. I wish it was. It is not. So have a plan that acknowledges that you're small and how to grow. Get some people that like start up or did startups, like find some innovative thinking because you're arguing and playing like you're, like you're at the table. You're not. So either figure out how to get at the big table without selling out or get the fucking start your own table or resonate with people. But I just, I just, it's just like lefty infighting. I think that's no one's, no one tuned into it. Nobody who's sitting there going, how am I gonna pay my bills? Is going, oh, I wanna to listen to a bunch of people I've never heard of bicker about the fine points of, who, of the Green Party's inner workings. I'm sorry. It didn't give me faith that any one of them are gonna win. But none of them are gonna win. No one's, they're not even gonna get nationally, they're, none of them are even gonna get on national TV. Everybody knows who Jill Stein is because she got out there. She, she ran a national campaign. And yes, getting 5% of the people to register, this one guy brought up a great point. Even in a state like California that's already had its primary. If your primary hasn't happened yet, go vote green. Bernie just sold us out, so go vote green. Backyard politics wrote me in, so boom, thank you. Shave your knuckles for justice, I'll run. But I mean like, I have a bigger following than those, than the, people I was watching. Nobody knows who Howie Hawkins is outside of our little indie media world. Nobody knows. Everybody knows who Jesse Ventura is. Everybody knows. He blew the world up. He shocked the world when he became governor. So I just, Green Party, wake up. Come up with a national strategy. Get greens on every school board. Get greens on this and get greens on that. And if you, ha if there's like internal fighting and corruption, then fucking I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to hear it. I, I, what? The national leadership when they're talking about the PRC or what, I don't even know what you're talking about. It was just like, again, I felt like I was watching community access TV of some school board argument of a school district I don't know about or don't even live in. Like, Jesus Christ. You need somebody big. That's what you need. You can argue that it's not fair or not right. You know, Somebody said, oh, we don't need some celebrity candidate like Jesse Ventura to hijack the group. No, you do. You <laughs> think out, you get outside of your little green bubble. Four in 10 people don't vote. 50% of Bernie supporters said they're not gonna vote for Joe Biden. Give us something. I've said this, the independent, the libertarian, 
They, they are ready to go, man. We are ready to go. The, the people that intentionally don't vote because the system is so corrupt, they are ready to go. Give them something. Just, ah. So I don't know. I hope, I hope this guy runs unless Nina Turner joins movement. I mean, Nina Turner tweeted out, I love movement for a people's party. So I don't know. I hope that means Nina's going to run, but I, I'll be honest with you. I got crazy respect for Nina Turner, but I haven't seen her do that much to call out the, pow the, the, the corruption within the Democratic Party. And I'm worried at the end of the day, she'll play ball with the Democrats. Someone will sit her down and, she, and Trump's bad. She'll go, oh yeah, Trump's bad. Like, if she left move, if she left and got with movement, I'm down. I'm down. I want someone that can fucking win. Well, in the next four years and then eight years from now, no, no, no. The climate is collapsing. We're not going to make it to the year 2040. So we need some real fucking shit, not some goddamn. <laughs> student council uh, fight like uh, get it going think big think big the biggest ideas were were hatched in a little room think of a big idea how can we do this like fuck man have you traveled through red state america i have i've been performing in there for 20 years I understood why they voted for Trump because NAFTA took away their jobs. I met them in Iraq and Afghanistan telling me I took the $20,000 reenlistment bonus, man, because there's no jobs back where I work. This is my third deployment in Iraq or Afghanistan. Talk to the people. Shave your knuckles for justice. Hey everybody, like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification button and the subscribe button even if you've done it before because they're unsubscribing many of you every day. Watch the ads all the way through. If you click skip ad, I don't get paid. Also, support us at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Rockfin.com is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. All my videos are on Rockfin ad free. Thanks for watching.